The Manchester United starting 11 versus West Ham tomorrow. Will Tenard be making any changes? A big bid comes in for Bruno Fernandes. What is the future on Manchester United star Kobe Nano? But another Man United star that hasn't been getting the minutes. And with Anthony's form, a lot of people are wondering why is Ahmed Diallo and Ten Hag has spoken on Ahmed Diallo, his role. And Ten Hag has spoken out about injuries mount. Amrabat's return, not getting a striker in January and more. So hello and welcome back to Alice Talks Football. Welcome back to your late night Manchester United news roundup. Well, we'll get into the news and then get into the Manchester United versus West Ham starting 11. So start with the first stories, which is a little bit more sort of transfer related and midfield related and news related was from record Portugal, which are pretty decent in terms of Portugal information. You still have to take a pinch of salt, but we know that Saudi have been looking at Bruno for a while. Said that Bruno Fernandes rejected an astronomical offer from the Saudi Pro League side Al Halal in January. Uh, probably doesn't surprise me they've been in for Bruno. Bruno loves United. He wants to be at United and he's made that very clear. He, he wouldn't leave us for money. He's very, very happy at United. Um, and I think Bruno will be here the next few years and I don't think he's tempted to leave. Sometimes I think maybe he'll go somewhere better than United because I actually don't think we play to his strengths. I think there's a really good player in Bruno and we're not playing to his strengths at the moment. But hopefully, you know, things turn around and that becomes the case. And I think Bruno was really good in the Wolves game. Now, talking about a good midfielder in the Wolves game, the best midfielder in the Wolves game, the best midfielder at United right now, Kobe Maynou. There's been a lot of information coming out on Kobe Maino, his maturity, how good he is in the first team environment, how he's an example at 18. He keeps his head down. He's not into the social media, the hype. He just wants to be a true professional. And it was said on Maino this, the way Maino has adapted to the Manchester United first team environment, showing confidence and composure beyond his years, has most impressed the staff and the teammates at the club. We saw Hoyland say when I came to United, they kept telling me how good Maynard was and how he was star boy. All the players are hyping up Maynard and what the players look at when they see Maynard is a player that every single player in the Man United squad believes that Maynard should be a first name on the team sheet because they cannot believe how calm and composed he is on the ball, how much confidence he has for an 18-year-old, how much maturity he has for an 18-year-old. And that speaks volume because you can be a really good player, but you've got to have that mental side and it seems like Maynard does. And it was said that Kobe Maynard is in line for a new improved contract in the summer to reward his breakthrough, which, to be honest, is deserved. And a lot of times, new contracts at Man United, we can't always stay undeserved. In terms of other news, I want to get into some of Tenor's comments on Ahmad, other issues. But for Rich Romano, did see something interesting that I quickly wanted to dive into. And he said that Dan Ashworth is the favourite for the director of football role at Manchester United, which I find particularly interesting because there's sort of been suggestions from other sources that actually Dan Ashworth's unlikely, Paul Mitchell's unlikely, and it could be a surprise name. Romano's saying, as far as he's aware, Dan Ashworth is the favourite. Uh, we know that Dan Ashworth is the first choice. The question mark is whether we, we will be able to get him from Newcastle or not. Will we be able to? He's only just joined Newcastle, unlimited money there. Will he, he want to come to United? Because... Um, the report saying that he actually rejected us in the past because he didn't want to work under Glazers and Mercer. Obviously, Jim McAvoy's in now, but the Glazers are still here. I don't see him leaving Newcastle for United, but Omar Barada left the City Group for United. I think it'd be pushed for Ashworth as potential, but who knows? I think they could drop a surprise name on us soon. Now let's go, dive into Tenol's comments. Tenol said, I think it's no secret we wanted to strike with January with the injury to Anthony Martial. We really need backup there, but it was not possible because we had to watch the FFP rules. He said it's not possible, and our FFP situation must be quite bad because 11 players left on loan, including players like Sancho, Donny van der Beek, that were on decent wages. We've got a fee for loan fee for Police Street and Leshbury and their wages paid for in full. Uh, but apparently we could not afford even a loan move. The reason United didn't pursue Werner is because they deemed his wages and loan fee of like 1 million euros too expensive and they couldn't afford that. So either A, they just didn't want to do anything because Ineos still wasn't ratified and the Glazers didn't want to do anything. Or B, we are screwed with FFP and FFP seems to be screwing everyone around and I think it's because Man City are under investigation other clubs have been charged people are taking it seriously now now on Man United not signing a striker Ten Hag said this he said we have Amari Forson and we have Ahmed Diallo of course we have Rashford who can play there but I think for the rest all the positions are occupied we have to be a little creative and it's up to the number nine position so he said even though he hasn't got a striker Forson could play there, Amadiello could play there, even Rashford could play there. And he spoke about Amadiello and suggested that he has the ability to play as a false nine. Um, hopefully he does apply Ahmed as a right winger. I know he's not a right winger that likes to hold width, which is what Tenag wants Anthony to do. I know he's not like Garnaccio and Anthony, but he likes to hold width. He's a winger that operates best in the half spaces and can alternate with the central attacking midfielder. He's a bit more like Sancho in that S, which isn't Tenag's kind of player. But the fact that Anthony's performances have been so 
consistently poor, offering nothing. And Ahmed Diallo's little cameo versus Forrest did more than Anthony. Even though his cameo wasn't versus Forrest was nothing super special, it was still better than what Anthony offered. And I just hope he doesn't get the police due treatment. I want to see Ahmad be coming off. I don't mind Forson coming on ahead of Ahmad, which sounds crazy because Forson was good. He was got an assist, and Forson's been good in his two cameos. And I'm all for Forson getting minutes. I'm not going to take it out on Forson because people are getting annoyed that Forson's coming on over Ahmad. I mean, I think Ahmad is better than Forson, and I think Ahmad is better than Anthony, and I think Ahmad should have come on instead of Forson. But it's more that Anthony is now coming off the bench to make an impact the last 20 minutes when he just has consistently done nothing and look if Anthony does do something and he proves me wrong fair enough but he's had so many chances that for me Amad Diallo should get chances it should be Amad Diallo off the bench and then force him for me as the two options and maybe Ten Hag sees Amad Diallo has taken up central spaces and that's why he's not playing on the right but he had a little cameo on the right versus Forrest and I thought it was quite good. And there were reports that Ahmad was unhappy. Ahmad was frustrated by this. But Romano said that actually Ahmad has had conversations with Tenog and he's happy at Manchester United. Although I do worry he's going to get the police due treatment. Now, for me, the person that should start on the right wing, although we've been talking about Ahmad, is Garnacho. Since Garnacho has moved to the right-hand side in the Premier League, he's ranked eighth for most open play expected assists, ninth for chances created. And you've got to remember before that, Manchester United wingers were ranked like not even in the top 100 for chances created honestly. Um, this is ranking all positions, by the way. Obviously, first one-on-one -on -one attempts, no one's completed, no one's done more one-on-one -on -one attempts than Garnacho on the right-hand side. And the interesting thing is because Anthony plays on the right-hand side and our left-hand side is known to be predominantly stronger, the way opposition teams set up against Manchester United is they almost press United to play down their right-hand side because they know Luke Shaw and Rashford is a threat and Anthony is less of a threat and they can deal with Anthony. But obviously, when they push us down the right-hand side and Garnacho is there, he's more of a threat and he's one possession third most in the final third. I also think he's, he's created five big chances since he's moved over to left wing, which I think it ranks third in the Premier League for that as well. So instantly, Garnacho on the right wing has really helped with our creativity issues, but also meant that we are useful on both hand sides. Now, what are the latest on players? What's the latest on Manchester United players and all of that? We know Amrabat is coming back from AFCON and uh, um, Ten Hag City returned today on Saturday to training and Malassia and Mount, he doesn't expect them back. Mount was meant to be back beginning mid-January from injury and he's still not back now. Uh, Lindelof is on his way back and wan is on his way back. It feels like wan and Lindelof should be back within the next week. Um, doesn't know about Malassia. Malassia has been gone all season. The surgery went wrong. Sounds horrible. Amrabat, Amrabat should be back in contention. But it's a shame with Mason Mount. Even Ten Hag have Mason Mount really disappointed because he had high expectations this season. But Ultimately, he has been injured. And then he was sort of asked about Casemiro. And I thought Casemiro had a good first half versus Wolves. Dropped up a little bit in the second half. But Casemiro is always a guy. He's a bit like Wayne Rooney. He always takes a few games to get going. And Ten Hag was asked about why did he sell off Casemiro? Did, was he not happy with Casemiro's performance? And Ten Hag just said no. The more games he's going to play, the better he's going to get. But he needs uh, game minutes. And that's why he takes most benefit from that at the moment. Also, with another foul, maybe he could have been sent off. And Ten Hag saying, I just took him off because I didn't want him to be sent off. And I wanted to just put some fresh legs in the midfield for the last 20 minutes because I don't think Casemiro all in all is ready to play full 90 minutes yet and I think Tenag was very fair with his comments. Now I do want to get into Manchester United versus West Ham starting 11. How should Manchester United line up versus West Ham? What starting line do I expect Tenag to see? And some people won't be happy with this but I fully expect it to be Andre and Nana in goal. I think Delo will keep his place at right back even if wan comes back because Delo was brilliant at right back versus Wolves. One of the best players on the pitch and inverted really well into the midfield. Luke Shaw's going to keep his place as the left centre-back, and then obviously Martinez and Varane at the back. I think we everyone knows that that probably is United's strongest back four. I think in games where you may be coming up against a Doku or a tricky winger, you want wan Bissaka, but and in games where you expect Man United to defend more and have less possession, you might want wan Bissaka, but I think games where you expect Man United to have more possession, you go with Diego Delo. I think Casemiro will be in the middle with Kobe, Mainu and Bruno Fernandes. And what I really liked is... For once, we saw Kobe Maino and Casemiro, the midfielders, dropping deep, which meant that Bruno didn't have to act as, as if a player that is involved in build-up between the midfield and the attacking lines. And Bruno could actually receive the ball in higher areas of the pitch, so he was in more dangerous areas to create. I feel one of the reasons that Bruno hasn't... I don't think Bruno's had a bad season, but one of the reasons he hasn't been quite his best this season is often having to be the second deepest midfielder, like the middle midfielder, because McTominay's been higher. And even the last game, Maino was higher against Newport County, so he's having to drop deeper to receive the ball. Um, and I think, um, and sort of acts as a player in build up, which I think then stops him creating as much in the final third. 
But what I liked is Mena was coming deeper to receive the ball, helping out Casemiro, and Bruno could stay quite high up and help out the game. Of course, Garnacho will be right wing for me, um, and I think Rashford scored a goal. I think actually Rashford's last few games for United, he has actually been decent. Rashford goes on the left wing and Hoyland up top because that is our best front three. And then if the front three is not quite clicking, I'd like to see Ama Diallo come on, then Forson. Uh, they would be my two subs. But I think that will be the United lineup. I think that is our best starting lineup. And I think Tenog always said something like, I want, you know, the lineup to get used to playing with each other. We've not been able to keep the same lineup for more than a few games in a row. We've not been able to keep our strongest lineup. We've got one game a week basically from now on. Let's just continually play our strongest lineup, let them play together, let them deal together, and that's going to get the best out of us. And the players are poor, you know, if Casemiro has a poor game, then you do bring on someone like Amrabat or McTominay. Um, if Rashford has a poor game, you do bring on someone like Amadiello, etc. But that is the lineup I go with. That is, I believe, what is our strongest lineup. Let me know your thoughts. How are you feeling for the best time game? I think we're going to win 2 0. I'm feeling confident since the Wolves game, but I just don't know because some part of me is like, oh, we played a few days ago. Will they be tired? One, one week they deliver, the next week they don't. Because one time when I get excited and think, yes, we've back, we've figured it out, we then crap the next game. And West Ham is a bogey team for us. They always cause us problems. So do let me know your predictions down below. Smash the like, smash the subscribe. Thank you for watching. Bye.